I'm going to talk a little bit about a new project which uh, is underway and um, basically, let me see if I can make this work. Basically we're building a new building. Uh, it's the first uh, new academic building on the campus of uh, Illinois Tech, which is at 31st and State in about 40 years. So this building is uh, basically about 75, 74,000 square feet of space. It's going to be a hub for uh, entrepreneurs and for innovation. And it's pretty astonishing. It opens October 25th. It's under construction now. It looks like it levitates. It actually sort of levitates. Uh, and it's wrapped in this completely astonishing new technology that permits uh, light and heat to come in and uh, the whole thing is sort of operates like a huge pillow. So it's, a, it's quite an ex interesting experiment. Nobody knows exactly uh, what's going on in there yet. So that's my job, which is to try and figure out uh, how do you do this. And fundamentally, the idea is uh, a hub and spoke. It's, uh, the idea is internally, it'll be about 50% uh, entrepreneurial and innovation education for every single student um, at Illinois Tech. They'll be, it's a required uh, program. And then in terms of the spokes, it'll be extending the opportunities of all that technology and about 7,000 uh, undergraduate and graduate engineers to the city and to everything else. At 1871, the thing that most consistently happened, bar none, was big companies came in and said, how do we get some of this uh, disruptive technology stuff going? And where do we find uh, diverse talent? And I was like, well, fucker, it's you know, 15 minutes on the red line. There are 7,000 engineers. Apparently, that was a missed concept. So this is uh, two things. It's a machine to generate uh, entrepreneurial engineers and uh, amazing technologists. And it's a magnet. The idea of the machine is to actually be able to take ideas coming in and to turn them into invoices and then to deal with everything in between. And the magnet is to pull to this pretty remarkable place uh, sponsors and technologists and thought leaders and everything else. And it's a huge change because this is a school that's 127 years old. Uh, not so many years ago, it was saved, basically saved by two guys named Galvin and Pritzker who each uh, invested about $60 million in the school to reinvigorate it. And this change thing is a constant theme, uh, and it's hard, but uh, you know, one of the things that I've said, uh, and I'm not known for abundant politeness, so I've said that, uh, guess what? Uh, a lot of what you're doing here was great like five years ago, 10 years ago, uh, it's not tomorrow. And so one of the really challenging and exciting things is to take on a culture like this, which has enormous technology, enormous resources, a huge faculty of talented people, and to change it. And what we've discovered is that people don't really change when sort of an apple hits them on the head or uh, lightning strikes. They change when the heat really builds up. And the heat in education couldn't be more intense right now. And so, you know, I deal with faculty and sort of, uh, and boards of directors. The boards of directors are sort of interesting guys. They're like, here's a thousand reasons why we shouldn't be doing anything. That's okay. And I tell them all the time, it's better that you're nervous and scared shitless than it is to just sort of sit still and let the world roll over you. Uh, and as examples, if you don't know, you know, the Blackberry, this is something we used to live with and it sort of disappeared. But I'll tell you a really interesting new example that is instructive for education. It has to do with music, which was one of my businesses uh, not so many years ago. The music industry changed, as you can see, very, very radically. But here's the message. The message is that nobody stopped listening to music. What they did is they found a different way to access the music. And so the sales went into the crapper, but access has, if anything, grown. It's been more accessible, it's more portable, it's more transportable. And the trick is that the same thing is gonna happen with education. And what's so exciting is that half of what we learn across the world is not in school. It's online, it's from YouTube, it's from peers, it's from every kind of program other than that. And so this idea that the schools are gonna control this sort of monopoly and uh, own the students or own our opportunities to learn because we're all gonna have to keep learning is going away. And what's happening instead is that you have to earn the right because we've got unlimited opportunities, unlimited choices today. And so this is a view that's pretty interesting. We have a new definition of loyalty, which I think is important too, it's a little depressing, which is that uh, loyalty means I haven't seen anything better yet. And this is pretty frightening, 
But that's how we live our life. And so uh, the job of an educator today across any industry, any business, any school is the same thing, which is you have to earn it because things are changing so quickly today. We actually have a term for this. It's called autocatalytic. And what it means is that every single change drives the next change and accelerates the change. And so today, as fast as you think you're going, as a business, as an institution, doesn't matter. The trick is how fast are you getting faster? And if what's going on outside is moving more quickly than you are, then you're heading in the wrong direction. And frankly, today, and this is pretty amazing, but think about it for a minute. Today, the rate of change is the slowest that it's gonna be for the rest of your life, for the rest of your life. And so, one of the things we know from racing is a really interesting thing, which is they don't wait for you and neither does the world. So we better get on the program. This is the campus. We're building right smack in the middle of this thing. And dealing with a school is a blessing sort of and a curse at the same time. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, sort of inertia. There's a lot of sort of this desire to keep doing what's worked pretty well. And the trick is going forward, it's not gonna work that well. And so we have an interesting kind of meeting, which you can sort of appreciate. This is, uh, uh, the French for this is called grin fucking. But in any event, um, what it means is that we don't really wanna have sort of commitments in words. We're looking for commitments in action and then really change and making change happen. And the thing you know is that uh, gravity continues to work. It's a pretty dependable thing. But we're not building a $40 million building in order to sort of play the same game, we're looking to change it. And the reason I'm doing it in particular is sort of a serious thing, as you look around and you see kids who say that school is the most boring place they go or that uh, why should they invest in education. You know, in business, it's just sort of sad news if you don't do it well, but in education, it's really criminal because you're really mortgaging people's futures. And so I don't think this is gonna be easy. This is a whole new thing. It's a brand new multi-year program to change a culture, to change a place, but it's thousands and thousands of lives. It's really important to the city, and it's worth doing, and if it wasn't worth doing, uh, I assure you that I wouldn't be doing it. So one of the things to understand is this is not limited to a school or this school. This is the way the world is gonna work. The future is not gonna be slightly different. It's not gonna be a little bit changed. And the idea that every model that we have, every way that we've looked at things is gonna change right before our eyes and it's gonna be different and we won't be able to go backwards. And so I'm gonna give you a physical demonstration of this right now, right at, on this stage. It's fascinating. All right, here we go. I'm gonna show you something and half of you, because your eyes read from right to left, are gonna interpret this as a certain kind of object and the other half, because you scan left to right, are gonna see something entirely different. But once I show you this image, you will see both for the rest of your life. Here you go. Is it a duck or a rabbit? Test it with your eyes. You can see exactly what's going on. And this is one of these things where now you'll know the story. And so the bottom line of all of this is really pretty simple, that entrepreneurs look at stuff everybody has looked at, everybody has understood, and they see it differently. And you don't change the past by just sort of tweaking it. You change the past by coming up with new models, new ideas, really innovation. That's the bottom line. And so. A lot of people sort of accept what has been for hundreds of years, sort of that's the way the world is, it is what it is. And we say that the world isn't that, the world is really what we make it. And we have an opportunity to make it different and better and that's the most exciting opportunity that I can think of. So thank you and the last thing I'll say is that we feel like we're gonna be surrounded by doubters and people who sort of buy into it and think maybe and they're sort of holding their cards close to their vest to see what happens. And here's what I say to all of them, that one day pretty soon, we'll have the privilege of saying, fuck you. Sorry, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, so, we won't say that, we won't say that, because if anything, we're empathetic. If anything, we share these people's pain. <laughs>